Hello and welcome to another pen video for me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here a, another inks comparison video and this is my favourite yellow inks comparison number one. So I think with that, let's go and swab up some of these inks. So I get a lot of questions on how I do these ink videos. So I decided I would add this to the front of each of the ink videos. I put links in the descriptions, but I know some of you watch this on TVs or mobile devices, so you don't get to see this. So first off, the paper is the number one question I get asked. What paper do I use for these ink comparison videos? So this is the original Tomoe River. This is 52 GSM and it is the white, not the cream, the white. Where possible, I try to go for the white because the cream can actually change the color of the ink just a little bit. So this is Tomoe River 52 GSM in the white. Um, a lot of people get confused as well because I have what looks to be a grid on this page and it's actually an Oxford Optic pad. These are the pads that I actually use when I'm writing my uh, writing samples for pen reviews or in my currently ink. So they have these little squares up here. Uh, I just use that because it's a good guide for me. When I put this very thin sheet of Tomoe River over, I can actually see squares. So it helps me write a little bit sort of straight uh, on the page. Not always, but sometimes it does. The, the other thing that I also have is a I have a bottle of water, plain water, and uh, I dip my nib in here. So for consistency, I use the same fountain pen, or <laughs> I guess it's not a fountain pen. It's using a fountain pen nib, though. This is a 3D printed pen from William Shakur in the UK. So he prints this uh, material 3D and it has a number eight size Bok nib which I can unscrew and you can see there so it is just a dip pen holder for a number eight size Bok nib and the idea is I want to have consistency with the writing sample so I use this I dip it in the ink uh, I write and then I will dip it in here and I will rinse the nib off several times and I will dry it. And then at that point, uh, I will then go on to do the next ink swatch and the next writing sample. So there you have it. That's uh, how I do my ink swatches. So I just wanted to show you uh, that here. Now on to the ink comparison video. So the first ink here on this uh, ink comparison video is an Ackerman a Dutch Masters, and it's Jelly Ochre Van Fran. And uh, this is uh, an ink that really started me down the Ackerman route of inks. Uh, if you don't know, Ackerman are actually, the inks are made by Diamine. Um, so uh, these are pretty good inks. Uh, I will do a um, ink swatch here, and you'll see here it's quite, uh, it's a bright yellow, but it's also an off yellow. I'd say it's a little bit more like an apricot, um, but you can see there it's as it gets dry, it gets brighter. We'll do a second pass over the top half, and that will just show the difference between a wet and a broad, or a dry or a narrow writing nib, and you'll be able to see that there nicely. So this is Ackerman. Uh, it's Dutch Masters and it's uh, Jelly Ochre Van Frans. But that is, oops, that is a uh, nice uh, yellow ink. And uh, it's one that uh, I had used a lot in the past. I've not written with it a lot lately, but... It, it still comes under my favorite uh, yellow inks. The next one is a KWZ El Dorado, and it's a newer uh, or newish yellow ink to me. Um, but uh, I had a lot of pen pals, uh, quite a few pen pals that kept asking me, do I have uh, the El Dorado ink from KWZ? And I kept saying no, no. And eventually I decided I would go and buy it. 
So uh, here's uh, an ink swatch, so you'll be able to see the difference. Um, it certainly is a more uh, off yellow, more darker yellow than maybe uh, Ackerman Dutch Masters Jelly Ochre Van Fran. We'll do a second pass over the top half just to show the difference between a wet or broad or a dry or a narrow writing nib. And this is a KWZ El Dorado. Uh, but that is quite uh, a nice uh, yellow. It's been one I've been using uh, for a little while now. Uh, I've had uh, inked up in some pens and I have to say that I do do like that quite a bit. The next ink here is the Roar and Klinger, and this is Helianthus. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now you can see that this is now going a little bit more brighter again towards Ackerman Dutch Masters Jelly Ochre Van Franz. We'll do a second pass over the top half, just to show the difference between a wet or broad, or a narrow or a dry writing nib. And this is Roar and Klinger. And it's a Helianthus. But that is uh, quite a nice uh, yellow uh, ink there. Now, the, the next bottle is actually, strangely enough, a Lamy Mango, which I've decanted into this lovely Edwardian crystal glass uh, inkwell. Now, I'm not going to uh, try and show you the front of it because... It has a hinged lid on it, and I've already spilt it, and I had to read through this video. So, I'm sorry, you're not going to see the, the front of it. Uh, maybe, I, maybe I can take a photo of it and, and insert it so that you can see it, actually. But it's a beautiful uh, inkwell, but uh, unfortunately, I did try to tilt it already, and it went everywhere. Now, the, the next one, I've got to be careful here because uh, this I have decanted into this beautiful uh, um, inkwell here. So that, that lid will come off if I don't. Oh, so we're doing an ink swatch here. And you can see this is a lovely yellow mango-y color. Um, it's getting a little bit dry towards the bottom there. We'll do a second pass over the top half, just so you can see how uh, wet or broad a nib would write versus a dry or narrow writing nib. And this is Lamy Mango. Uh, but uh, I do still actually have the bottles, uh, the Lamy bottles, but I always do find them a little bit more difficult to, to be able to uh, fill from. So... I decided to uh, mix two bottles into this inkwell, and I'm glad I did it because it's, it's a nice inkwell. And then the last ink here is a Blackstone ink called Golden Wattle. Now, unfortunately, Blackstone uh, have now shut their doors and are no longer available, so you cannot buy these inks. And and I I want to say that most, or if not all, of the retailers that that did stock. Blackstone um, no longer have any uh, ink remaining, or certainly not the Golden Wattle from what I've seen. So we're doing an ink swatch here. Now again, this is a nice bright yellow ink, and I bought this on, on in a trip uh, to London, um, and I wanted uh, a bunch of inks, and I saw this one. Uh, I'll do a second pass over the top half, just to show the difference between a wet or broad or dry or narrow writing nib. Uh, but I bought this uh, in London and I, I wanted to like it, but I just found uh, at the time it was just too bright, uh, a yellow. Um, but uh, I, I would prefer something towards like Jelly Oka Van Fran, KWZ El Dorado, Lamy Mango, because they are a little bit more easier to read on a, a white piece of paper. But this is a Blackstone. And it's Golden Wattle. 
but still I, i've got several bottles of that and uh it has been a favorite of mine in the past so i thought i would uh, add it here on this video as well so i think let's now take a look at these inks now that they have dried so the first thing here is Ackermann Dutch Masters Jelly Ochre Van Franz. And I will show you a close-up here. Can you see the difference between a wet or a broad or a dry or a narrow writing nib? You definitely can see uh, quite a bit of difference there. Can you see shading? There is shading in that pulled area there. Um, can you see any sheen? You're not really going to see any sheen on yellow inks. Uh, but that ink uh, is is quite nice and if you look at that writing sample it almost shimmers even though it's not a shimmer ink so it doesn't have any shimmer particles in that ink the next ink here is kwz el dorado and this is an interesting ink for sure um, it's an ink that i bought recently but i have been using quite a bit uh, can you see the difference between a uh, wet or a broad or a dry or a narrow writing nib definitely you can huge difference in contrast there between the two is there shading going on there is shading in the pulled area that you can see uh, again you're not going to see any sheen but that ink also takes a little bit to dry as well uh, it's uh, certainly a little bit more of a wetter ink uh, so uh, if you're using it on Tomoe River you might have to wait a little bit longer for that to dry the next ink here is Rora and Klinger, and it's Helianthus, or I think it's Sunflower. Um, I'll show you up close. Uh, can you see the difference between a wet or a broad, or a dry or a narrow writing nib? You can see a slight difference, not a huge amount, but you can see a slight difference there. Is there shading going on in the pulled area? Not really. Uh, it's a quite a muted yellow, but if you look at the um, writing sample there, you can definitely see some shading going on. Uh, again, it's not a sheening ink, so you're not going to see uh, that sheen. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a yellow ink sheen before. The next ink here is Lamy Mango, and that is a, a little bit similar to KWZ El Dorado. Uh, you can definitely see the difference between a wet or a broad or a dry or a narrow writing nib. The writing sample is still wet, actually, on this one. Can you see uh, any shading? You can in the pulled area. Uh, and again, you, you're not going to see any sheen there. Uh, but it's a very, very nice mango color. So uh, for me, that is an ink that I've been using a lot lately. And then the last ink here is Blackstone Golden Wattle, which you can no longer get. Unfortunately, Blackstone... The guy, that the chemist that was making this ink in Australia, uh, shut his doors uh, around just before COVID, uh, the pandemic started, and uh, unfortunately has not come back since. So um, it's a shame because Blackstone did have some nice inks, some nice colours. Didn't have a, a massive range. I think there were about eight or ten colours in the range. Uh, but I know they were popular around the world, but... Unfortunately, you can't get those inks anymore. Uh, so can you see the difference between a wet or a broad or a dry or a narrow writing nib? Yes, you can see a bit of a difference, a little bit like Wara and Klinger Helianthus. Not a huge difference, but you can see a slight amount there. Is there any shading? There is some shading in the pool area, but not a lot. I typically don't find a lot of shading in yellow inks. And of course, you're not going to see any sheen there either. Although the writing sample there is actually quite nice. Again, that looks a little bit like um, the Jelly Ochre Van Franz and the Helianthus. It kind of looks like it might have a little bit of shimmer in it, but it does not. So there you have it. That's my favorite yellow inks comparison number one video. If there are any of these inks that you like, do let me know in the comments below. Or if there are any other yellow inks you think I should check out, do let me know in the comments below. So that's my favorite yellow inks comparison number one video. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.